Welcome back to Guide to Pen Testing. In this episode, we're going to be covering some of the passive reconnaissance techniques you can use to get an edge in your penetration tests. The techniques you're going to use are going to vary depending on whether you're doing an internal or external penetration test. For external penetration tests, there's going to be a lot more information available as opposed to internal where there's not going to be very much public data available. The first site we're going to take a look at is Netcraft. Netcraft have this interesting little form here on their website where if you fill in a domain name it should tell you information that they've gathered about it so let's just go for google.com so it's found a bunch of different sites and when they first saw it and all this kind of stuff um, but let's just go for uh, google.com so it'll link us to it there but we can look at the site report Gives you a history of IP addresses it was host at, hosted at, which is really important information. Um, if they would have recently switched their site to Cloudflare, for example, you may be better off still with the old IP because it may not have actually changed. Here we have a security rating for the site, and it'll tell us whether it's on a spam house block list, a policy block list, an exploits block list, or a domain block list. What this could tell us is if the site has already been compromised in the past if more than likely if they're a legitimate company and they're on any of these lists there's some kind of issue going on with the site and they may have already been compromised the next site we're going to take a look at is one of our personal favorites you will need an account on this but it is completely free if you don't have an account you can only do five searches a day census essentially do full internet-wide scanning and store all kinds of different data about the IP addresses they scan. This means more often than not we can type a standard search phrase and get information about what IP addresses are hosting stuff. Again I'm gonna go for Google. If I just start off by searching Google First, it's going to give me all the IPv4 hosts which contain Google in their host name. And you can see there's quite a lot, and even some that aren't affiliated with Google. The most useful part of Census, I think, is the certificate section. Here it will give you all of the sites that it's found with Google as part of the common name or as part of the certificate. So, for example, here we've got store.learning firmastart.nest.com which has a SSL certificate issued by Google. The main reason why you'd use any of these sites is to find IP addresses which you don't already see. If you're performing more of a red team engagement against a customer this is going to be the way you actually find the host that you're trying to go against. A lot of the time it's not going to be a written scope where they just say here you go go against all of our IP addresses usually you have to find them and then actually ask the customer whether it's okay to attack them and you're actually probably going to be finding something way more useful than that than what they're willing to provide to you the next site I'm sure you've already heard of is Shodan and I'm kind of limited what in what I can show you here because I don't have a premium account on Shodan Shodan is kind of like Census, but way more up-to-date and way more accurate and just in-depth. It really is like Census on steroids. I've just did a quick search here for Google, and uh, it's going to give me any records it finds which have Google in it in any kind of way. And I can't even see how these relate to Google, but for some reason they do. And it may be in the actual contents of the page which is something census don't bother searching for they don't show you um, well they don't scan page contents so if you were actually searching for I don't know passwords and you want to find people who've just got admin interfaces open on the internet um, you wouldn't find that with census but you would with Shodan. Between those three sites you can probably get a pretty good picture of your targets what what kind of infrastructure they have I'm going to switch over now and do a little bit of internal reconnaissance and passive reconnaissance so we're going to be limited in the tooling that we can use. So I've just launched my Kali virtual machine and also launched Wireshark and straight away we can see what a little bit of what's going on on the network. So we can see an ARP broadcast going on here saying who has 0.1 tell this IP address. So 
realistically, if we keep seeing this, we already know that 192.168.0.1 is a gateway of some sort, because that's the only real reason why, especially on our network, um, you'd see all these art broadcasts asking for this IP address. Plus, I have the added benefit of knowing that's the uh, default gateway, but that's a bit of information which you could use in a real test. You see here more of these art broadcasts, and uh, so we see some Spotify Connect stuff going on, um, which is accurate because we've got Chromecasts and Spotify Connect devices all over this network. Right here we have uh, a Chromecast going on, and we know we have a Chromecast on this network, but this is what I'm getting at. When it comes down to opening Wireshark, this can really quickly build you a picture of what's going on around you. On a network, there's never nothing going on. There is always something going on on a network. Regardless of anyone's in the, comp in the, in the building at the time, there's always something going on. And especially on a home network like this, there's constantly broadcasts and especially with like Chromecast and any kind of um, like Amazon Fire TV boxes, anything like that. They're all constantly putting out network traffic, which you could actually have a look at. So in this case, we're not doing like a man in the middle attack. This is just what is hitting our virtual machine. So passive reconnaissance inside the network is quite limited in what you can do but it's 100% worth it. You may find some silly piece of software which just sends out plain text passwords all over the network and you may see domain admin credentials right here. So it's definitely worth having open and especially while you're actually pen testing, um, you can find that some firewalls do silly things like if you port scan them, they'll port scan you or something like that and it just gives you an idea of what is going on on the network. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.